Gracias, Eliana. And so it is now my great pleasure to introduce to you our keynote, our opening keynote speaker, La Doctora Frances Colon, who will be sharing her thoughts on the state of Latinas as emerging innovators. Dr. Frances Colon is a Deputy Science and Technology Advisor to the Secretary of State of the United States Department of State, where she promotes integration of science and technology into foreign policy dialogues, global scientific engagement for capacity building, advancement of women in science, and innovation as a tool for economic growth around the world. During her time as Deputy Advisor, Dr. Colon has overseen the creation of the, net, of the networks of diasporas in engineering and science initiative to empower diasporas with science expertise to develop and influence effective policies and solve challenges in their countries of origin. Previously, Dr. Colon served the Department of State as the Science and an Environment Advisor for Latin American Caribbean Affairs. Dr. Colon also coordinated climate change policy for the Energy and Climate Partnership of the Americas announced by the President Obama. Dr. Colon earned her, PhD, earned her PhD in neuroscience in 2004 from Brandeis University and earned her Bachelor's of Science in Biology from the University of Puerto Rico, where her passion for science was sparked as an undergraduate researcher. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Dr. Francis Colon. Oh, there's a stool here. That's great for short people. Okay. Ah, there we go. So, good morning. Buenos dias. Yes. What a pleasure it is to be here. Angelica, you made me cry. I did. You did. Um, I have to say I'm in awe of this room. The energy here is incredible. I went to dinner with a couple of amazing women last night, and I started to feel just the energy. It was really amazing. I've already spoken to a couple of you, and one of you told me that you've started an incubator in Chicago for Latinos. Another one of you last night told me about this amazing technology that allows us to look at media in a new way that could completely impact international relations, and I can't wait to introduce her to everybody back home. And so already, I am completely empowered and energized and ready to go. Um, I want, my, the purpose of my being here is to talk about how policy fits into this, how we might use government, how we might use policy makers and decision makers to propel us even further forward. Um, I know that in Silicon Valley is the tech world and folks know their stuff here regarding technology. The people in DC, who are those folks that are over there making decisions? I'll tell you something, the reason I went to DC in 2006, um, when I graduated with my PhD in developmental neuro, was because I wanted to have an impact. I wanted to change things. And so I'm looking for my clicker. Do I have it? Is this it? Okay. So I wanted to have an impact. I wanted to use my scientific background to change the way things were being done. And I got there thinking, ¿Quiénes son esa gente? What are they doing? I was, I was angry. I was doing my PhD thinking, these people have no idea what they're doing. What are they doing to research funding? There's no opportunities, there's no access. I got there and I found a lot of really bright people. Um, and I've had the pleasure of working alongside them ever since. Um, and I will talk about that policy aspect of my work um, in, in the next few minutes. But, okay. There's two slides together, let's see. Okay. Latinas are at an incredible point in history in this country. Recently, Nielsen released the Latina Power Shift Report, which put in perspective the place where we are. And we have an incredible opportunity. You are striking at just the right time with this. We have 1.2 trillion annually in buying power. We are outpacing our hermanos Latinos in terms of education and career opportunities, the way we seek these. We have exceeded females from other groups in college enrollment. 
And we have embraced entrepreneurship, and you'll hear later on from Alejandra Castillo, um, Latina firms are rising pretty quickly. In the period of time from 2002 to 2007, there was an increase in 46% in terms of Latina created firms in this country. So what are we to do? Today, like Angelica said, this is an opportunity. The way I looked at my trajectory was an opportunity. When I got to DC, I figured out that I could use my bicultural skills to advance our country's agenda abroad. No es lo mismo getting to a foreign country and saying, buenos dias, hi, and they say, oh, where's the US delegation? I'm saying, I'm, I'm the US delegation. <laughs> the face of this country has changed. I do my diplomacy con besos y abrazos. I talk about STEM. And I'm a woman, I'm Latina, I'm five feet tall. And they don't know what's going on. It's okay. Um, I'm Latina, I am American, I am a scientist and I am a diplomat. I don't have an alternative science career. I want people to stop saying that. That doesn't exist. I am a scientist that is also a diplomat. That's how I use my skills. And I think scientists, women, Latinas with technology backgrounds can pretty much do anything. If you want to run for office, after you start your startup, you can do that. <laughs> I want more of you to run for office. I want more of you to link up with us in DC. Okay. And of course, I do all these things on foreign policy, and it's very exciting. But one of the things that um, really strikes me is the fact that what we do domestically on technology, on STEM, the way we empower our Latina students, the way we empower our Latina women, impacts us abroad. Our competitive edge depends on what happens here today. Other countries are investing heavily in their young people, in their scientists, in their research and development. They know the value of investing in those areas. And they are gaining a competitive edge. What are we going to do? What can you do? We have to compete globally. And we have a special opportunity. By 2060, 37% of the undergraduate population in the US is going to be Latino. That is huge. Are we investing now so that we can have an impact later? As a country right now, we are not among the top performers. And since 1995, we have either stayed at the same place in international trends, or maybe even slipped a little. But we have an opportunity. I'm happy to talk about challenges, but I really want you to focus on what this means in terms of opportunity. Think Silicon Valley, but think DC. How do you get things to change there so they can help you? And think globally. How do we maintain that competitive edge? Our young students are not reaching great specific proficiency in math and science currently. And Hispanics perform even lower than other groups. We have novice science teachers. Those are teachers that have two years or less of experience in the classroom, specifically in the classrooms where our Latino students are going to class. Science teachers say they have inadequate facilities and funding. They don't give them enough time in the day to teach science, so it's the class that falls on the wayside. A few of our kids take AP placement tests. But the President's Council of Advisors in Science and Technology has said that we need to really, really work on those STEM degrees and getting more people to choose these STEM careers in order to maintain a competitive edge. 37% of Latinas intend to have a science or engineering major when they enter. It's in fact increased by 8% in the last 14 years. Still, the areas that are technology heavy or patent intensive areas we have very low percentages. Think computer science is 1%, engineering 3%, et cetera. Look at the opportunity. Our women that are employed in science and engineering have a salary premium. They get paid more. Even folks that do 
a science and engineering job without having a science and engineering degree get paid more than their counterparts. Those people with science and engineering degrees are less often unemployed. In the workforce, Hispanics make up 6% of the engineering workforce, 2% of the tech workforce, 5% of computer and math scientists, 4% of software developers. ¿Qué tenemos que hacer para cambiar eso? Female patents in the US are at 7%. But we've in fact doubled the number of patents filed in the last 22 years. So again, we have challenges, but we have opportunities. They are growing. If we look at the makeup of boards across Silicon Valley, but across scientific advisory boards in the US in general, we're looking at pretty low numbers. Scientific advisory boards, women make up 5% of the makeup of all scientific advisory boards. You know what happens at scientific advisory boards? Men trade information and tips. They tell each other what to invest in. They recommend each other for jobs, for consulting gigs. Dinero. Mm -hmm. Why is that when all the reports across the board, Credit Suisse, McKinsey, all tell us that executive boards with women have higher return on investment? They make more money. Tech companies headed by women make 35% more return on investment. So what can we do? Where am I on time? Can somebody tell me the time? Hi, perfect. I want us to stop wishing really, really hard that things will change. I want us to stop thinking that it's somebody in DC that has to change those policies. Somebody will advocate for you. No, you have to advocate for you. We have to advocate for us. <laughs> Call things out. There's no women on that board. Don't go to that conference. We have voting and vocal power. Put it to use. Policymakers work for you. I work for you. You pay my salary. I have a responsibility to you, as do all of your decision makers and your policymakers, locally and nationally. Hold them accountable. Are the Latino policy advocacy organizations across the country and in DC putting STEM and tech and training at the top of their priority list? If not, let them hear you. Get politically savvy. Make use of those platforms out there for role models. Our Latinas are not seeing enough of you. They need to see you. If they can't see you, they can't be you. Sometimes what surrounds them looks nothing like this. They need to see you. Last night I heard somebody at dinner say, you must lift while you're climbing. I believe that that's our responsibility. I give a lot of talks for scientists, and they always say, what's going on in DC? Why aren't people communicating science correctly? Why don't people know about these things? And my response is, are you communicating your science? Who paid for your grant? Taxpayers. Yet do you get out from your university and your lab bench to tell them the results of your work? To tell them how it impacts them every day? We have a responsibility to technology, we have a responsibility to move our businesses forward, but we have a responsibility to our community as well. They need to know you, they need to see you, you need to blog, you need to tweet, you need to be out there to lift others while you're climbing. I'm really excited about today, I can't wait to meet all of you. I'm gonna make it happen, I'll meet all of you. Um, I'm gonna finish now because I wanna leave maybe one or two minutes for questions. Um, Angelica and I talked about that, so we have three minutes, so thank you so much. I can't, I can't see anything, it's like a... <laughs> Is this it? Okay. Yes.
Hello. Hi. My name is Cynthia Florentino. Um, I recently relocated to the DC area. What advice would you give a young Latina who is pursuing a grad degree to enter the realm of policy in tech when there are few, such few faces that look like mine? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> So are you thinking about how do you influence policy or how do you work on policy and government, things like that? Well, how do you um, break in or? How do you break in? Yeah. So my advice is always to use what you have. We all have strengths and there's areas where we are very unique. I think one of the things you have to do is figure out where your niche is. I think that there's many opportunities in DC with policy advocacy organizations that you're looking for talent. I know we get there and we think, this is such a big monster. Where do, where do I fit in? Ellos me van a querer a mí. I think the question is, you, we need you. Let's find where your strength is that we can talk after. Let's figure out where you fit in. And let's put you out there. I think that we all have this little bit of imposter syndrome, right? Um, what do you, you know, how do I break in? Are you kidding? I can't wait to go to coffee with you when we get back. Until you see the 10 people, that's why we're here, right? Networking. Um, so let's talk about it, but I think that there's many opportunities. Don't doubt it for a second, and we'll, we'll make it happen, okay? Great, thank you so okay. much. One more. Dr. Colon, un placer. Uh, my name is Monica Tahir, and I am about to launch a startup. I own my own business as well. My 16-year-old daughter is a junior in high school. She just launched beyondadream.org, okay. which basically is a nonprofit organization that will, fo she's not here today, she's in school, but it's basically a, an organization that will focus on reaching out to top Latina students in inner city schools uh, in a pilot program in LA, starting in LA, for them to have an opportunity to go to campuses like UCLA, USC, Cal State LA. These kids have never set foot in a university. And it's, it's just about motivating them in order for them to, to let them know that, yes, there is a chance, that, that they have a chance. I want to know what can we do in order to get you on the advisory board? Oh. <laughs> I thought she was going to say, where does she go for funding? I was going to say, I was like, National Science Foundation, National Girls Collaborative Project. No, yes. OK, done. Thank All you. Right. I'll look for you later. Thank you. Thank you.